this is uh, chapter three uh, and yeah 16th of june today uh, right okay if anyone uh, wants to know what i'm using for this is our our markdown basically which i'm sure you've all have heard of um so yeah i've been discovering that today uh and right okay so what is a beta binomial model for um so it's a model you can use uh, when you want to look at something with a proportion so for examples uh, of use, they include the proportion of people that use public transport, uh, the proportion of people uh, on trains that are delayed, uh, the proportion of people who prefer cats to dogs, uh, so on. Um, can you think of any examples uh, of your own? Sure, like uh, let's say like election. Yeah. An election with two candidates, for example, or maybe more. Yeah. It's good for polling, as, as we will find out shortly. Yes. Um, right. OK. Uh, so uh, the beta uh, prior model. So the first model we're going to construct is based on a scenario where your campaign manager for Michelle uh, for president campaign in the state of Minnesota. Um, so far, you've conducted 30 opinion polls, which make me think so you're actually a pollster rather than a campaign manager. But anyway, um, Michelle's support is generally around 45%, but has been low as 35%. That must be a rogue poll, surely, uh, but can be as high as 55%. Um, so this is the basis of your prior. And uh, so we're all good. Yeah. <laughs> You might see that photo more than once today. It's such a good photo. I, I, I like it a lot. Uh, right. OK, so how has the model changed from last week? Um, the example of Kasparov's probability of beating Deep Blue uh, at chess was a discrete example. In that case, uh, we greatly oversimplified reality to fit within a framework of introductory Bayesian methods. Uh, mainly, we assumed uh, that pi could only be um, 0.2 uh, 0.5 or 0.8, the corresponding chances of which were defined by a discrete probability model. Uh, however, in the reality of Michelle's election support and Kasparov's chess skill, pi can only be a value between zero and one. Uh, we can reflect this uh, reality and conduct a more nuanced Bayesian analysis by constructing a continuous prior probability model. Uh, you might be recalling. Uh, um, your high school calculus in a second. Uh, right. Okay, so we're going to be uh, using probability density functions for continuous models rather than probability mass functions for discrete models. So it's basically curves, not blocks, bumps, not lumps. Basically, that's how I remember it anyway. Uh, okay, so what qualities does the probability density function have? So the proportion uh, has to be greater or so greater than or equal to zero uh, the area under the curve sums to one and the area under the curve between a and b so if you've got a curve and just put some lines in it, an a and b line uh, the probability of pi uh, being in that in that range is basically the area there uh, okay so yeah i was a little bit surprised when i was reading it uh, apparently the beta pi yeah it's a process of trial and error so you can basically use what you want by the sounds of it. Um, so yeah, that's what they suggest in the book. Uh, and, uh, right. Okay, so um, yeah, 3.2. Uh, this is where we gather some new data by conducting an opinion poll. On this occasion, we asked 50 people who they are supporting and a whole 30 of them are supporting Michelle, which is quite a lot, particularly in Minnesota, particularly for a Democrat. Um, yeah, so she's obviously quite happy about it. Um, now, uh, let's go to the next slide. Right, okay. Yeah, you can tell this is the first time that I've used uh, our markdown. This is actually um, in the book, and there are actually nine frames on there. Uh, but it's a quite a big photo. So when it got put into our markdown, um, it, I don't know how to change the size of it, actually. Uh, but I will, I will give a positive example. So um, 
for this one, uh, which basically says that Michelle gets 10% support, this is a probability distribution for 10%, um, the likelihood that she got 30 is, um, given the overall level of 10, is just infinitesimally small, basically. Um, as the level of support goes up, uh, the distribution goes more towards 30. So it becomes more likely. So uh, when uh, the actual support is 50-50, uh, there's a reasonable chance, it's not the most likely option, there's a reasonable chance uh, that 30 people would say in that poll that they would support her. Um, and there are further examples, it, go, it goes up to 90 uh, on there. Right. Okay. Now, um, this is basically the likelihood function. So uh, given the support of 30, how likely is this data? Uh, so uh, yeah, so the likelihood function um, there, uh, given 30 of Michelle's election support, um, yeah, pi given the observed poll in which um, 30 or 50 polled Minnesotan supported her. The vertical lines represent the likelihood evaluated at pi in, so that's the 10%, 20%, so on and so on, until 90%, basically there. Uh, so given that there are 30 people supporting her, it's very unlikely that she's got no support. It's also unlikely that she's got total support. It's going to be somewhere in the middle, basically, uh, slightly to the right. Okay, so what have we got so far? Um, so far, uh, we've got the prior. So that's the yellow bit. That's the previous polls. Uh, this is actually quite a good poll for Michelle. Um, so uh, her support is actually looking a bit higher uh, on there. So um, yeah, that's the blue. That's the likelihood. Um, what are we missing? I, well, I cannot be the only one to answer. Like other yeah. people have to try. I have an idea, but like, no, was it? I mean, don't be shy. Cool. There, 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 there is a clue on there, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. Spot, spot, spot the one that's missing. Posterior estimate. Yay! There we go. Right. Okay. We'll see. We'll see if we can find the posterior estimate. Uh, right. Yeah, uh, this is another one that actually fell victim to um, uh, the picture being too big. Uh, so you're actually fortunate with this one, is instead of having three uh, possible answers, uh, you've only got two. The good news here is uh, basically the correct answer is one of these two, which is rather fortunate, isn't it? Um, so uh, if we have a look at A, um, A, the prior is basically in the middle. Uh, the scaled likelihood indicates, indicates that Michelle's uh, support is uh, somewhat higher than the prior. And the posterior is saying uh, that in reality, her total support um, after the analysis is actually a lot less. Um, or it could be B, where her support's fairly in the middle. Uh, then she's had this good poll and the posterior is basically a combination of both of them. So you might be able to guess which one it is. Uh, right, okay. So yeah, there we go, it was B. Uh, I, think, I think in C, the posterior ended up really on the right-hand side or something like that. Uh, right, okay. So. Yeah, so what is the effect of this new data? Basically, uh, a comparison uh, illuminates the polling data's influence on the posterior model. Uh, mainly after observing the poll in which 30 of 50 people supported Michelle, the expected value of her underlying uh, support pi nudged up from approximately 45% to 50, uh, which is uh, the mean uh, in there. Also the standard deviation has got a little bit narrower because we've got some more evidence. Basically, the more evidence you've got, the more likely uh, it is, basically. Okay, right. 
So not all of us have got our own polling organizations. Uh, so I don't think any of us have actually, uh, but we can still use computer uh, just about. And but yeah, what you can also do is uh, simulation as well. So this is a simulation of the uh, same data. It's 10,000 times. Uh, and there's actually a blue line there. And uh, uh, so this is for 30. This is where 30 people have said that they support Michelle. Obviously, that can change. That's the uh, um, uh, the y axis uh, on the left there. And uh, I mean, you can obviously use it for other figures, but for our purposes, we're using uh, 30 because it matches uh, what we found in the poll. Uh, and then, yeah, th this is just basically how you filter that out. Uh, so you can just select uh, 30 for filter, and this will create a distribution there. Uh, so this is the estimate uh, from the 10,000 samples, basically. Uh, but it's not using all of the 10,000 samples, because uh, it's only the section that uh, had 30 people responding yes. And actually, it's not that different uh, from uh, from the results. So it was 50 before. Uh, in the simulated one, it's 50.5, uh, and the standard deviation was um, four before. I think this is 3.7. Now, the number of uh, data points on this row is 211, which is not vast in the grand scheme of things. Um, you can always change the number of simulations. If you want to put 50,000, if you want to put 100,000, you can. It's just how long you want your computer to go processing it, basically. Uh, right. OK. Yes. And then we, uh, so, so yeah, so that was basically having a look at Michelle's um, polling in Minnesota. Um, I don't think she's actually running those. So um, I think it was probably more of a bit of a dream for the authors uh, there than reality. But anyway, um, this has actually happened, though. Milgram's Behavioural Study of Obedience. Um, so it's a famous study where subjects were asked to deliver an electric shock um, to an actor. Um, they didn't know the person was an actor. Um, it was under the ruse of a study on the effect of punishment on memory. Uh, and if memory serves me correctly, I think they had, it, they used to have a monitor that went up to said that it was 450 volts and it was dangerous. So you shouldn't shock people with 450 volts. Um, so, um, but, the, but the participants were being slightly misled because it wasn't actually a test on the effect of punishment on memory. Uh, it was a test um, that on obedience to authority uh, and the conflict with personal conscience because this was done in the 60s. Um, and I think it was probably, you know, the after effects of World War II, I think probably that the reasoning behind it was. Um, right, okay. So, given the beta prior, what does that reveal about the psychologist prior understanding of pi? So, the options are they don't have an informed uh, opinion. Um, they're fairly certain that a large proportion of people will do what the authority tells them. Um, or um, they're fairly certain that only a small proportion of people will do uh, what the authority tells them. So, I mean, they, they, these were quite idealistic 1960s times. So they had a fairly good view of human nature, basically. Well, I, I will go. Uh, I think this is the last option, but I have complete the <laughs> chapter. So, well, uh, I don't know if you play the lottery. You might want to do it tonight because yes, it is that. Right <laughs> <answer. laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically, this is the plot of the prior. What it's basically saying is the large majority, um, they reckon it's less than a 25% chance um, of uh, people electrocuting others. Um, they may be in for a bit of a shock. Sorry, I, I couldn't help that. Um, right. Okay. So what actually happened in the experiment, um, obedience to authority uh, won out because basically the experimenter was there telling the participant, go on, electrocute them. Um, 
and just surprisingly, a lot of them did. Um, okay, so the prior wasn't supported by the evidence. Uh, the data collected showed that 26 out of the 40 participants inflicted the maximum electric, uh, electric shock, basically. So they had an actor on the other side of the wall, basically, who was trained to scream. Um, yeah. So, right. Okay, so the conclusions that we can draw there, though they started out with an understanding that fewer than 25% in people would inflict the most severe shock, um, the data actually changed that. So there was strong counter uh, evidence in the study data. Now, after it's been updated, uh, they understand the figure to be somewhere between 30% and 70%. Uh, so if you get out of the programming again, yeah, on the left there, there's the prior. Um, the blue uh, likelihood is on the right, and the posterior is quite heavily inclined towards the right there, basically. So they won't be estimating it's only like 5% of people again who are going to do it. Um, so, right, okay. Um, there was a bit in there about the role of ethics in statistics and data science. Um, I don't know how you all are on your research ethics, but do you reckon that'd be allowed today? That, that, that experiment, electric shocks? I mean, I will go with probably not. <laughs> I think it goes beyond statistics and data science, right? Just like, are you allowed to yeah. shock people? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it might, might depend whether you're the government or not, I suppose. I mean, they probably do worse experiments than average. I mean, if you think like without people, like in the same air and um, same epoch, like in other discipline in ecology, they totally like put like, this is the famous, uh, they are the, the demonstrate the, um, the bio, uh, bio uh, highland theory in biogeography. So they literally like uh, use like their orange agents, which is like some kind yeah. of strong, strong pesticide. They use it on small island of island of various size, and they couldn't take the time of colonization. So even like without people, like at this time they were doing experiments that I assume no, we will not like literally like burn island to see <laughs> how they can like regrow from, I mean, all the population of insects and flower can regrow uh, from them, so. Mm -hmm. per personally, I'm quite pessimistic, mainly because of human nature. Um, <laughs> and um, but basically these can, things kind of like keep rolling around. Um, okay, and yeah, the second part there is, how can we make sure that we use data science and st uh, statistics uh, ethically? Because, I mean, now we're moving more into AI, um, so, for instance, uh, in the UK, there's been a bit of a debate um, over the police having facial recognition uh, cameras um, because not only do they not work that well, um, there are also existing problems between uh, people of ethnic minorities and the police in the UK, quite a lot, as I'm, as I'm sure there are in other parts of the world. Um, and because the data sets um, that are used to program these things don't have enough black faces in, um, black people have a lot more trouble out of these AI systems. So that's why they're being clamped down on, basically. Um, so, yeah, right. It's, it's a difficult topic. I don't have like clean answer of that, but I think this is something that we should change, or we should think and change like when it's obviously uh, giving bad results, like, Sometimes using prediction with bad, I mean, yeah. with just data is not like doing, I mean, a lot of time we should do prospective, which is not necessarily only with data, but like how we want the world to be instead of how the data and the model show how the world can be. I think this data and model are not everything. Yeah. It's probably like also like a part of human decision and politics on yeah. how, where we want to be, but. This is good also, yeah, it, I mean, it depends who you want to work for as well. Because <laughs> you can use data science for good and you can use data science for, for, for people who aren't so nice as Probably well. Too. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. I'm getting towards the end. I think I've gone through this quite quickly.
uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So um, these are some useful uh, videos that I've found. Yeah. I think Brendan, you mentioned three blue, one brown before. They've got a really good one on binomial distributions. That was probably the best one that I, uh, that I found. Um, there was also Serrano Academy, the beta distribution in 12 minutes. That was quite good. Uh, and a Seinged milligrams obedience experiment. Uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that was quite short. That was about five minutes. Uh, but yeah, basically gives a bit more insight into that. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, excuse me, Will. Can, yeah. can you put the, the links uh, in the chat so we're going to access them? Yeah, easily? hold on. Maybe you can push it. I mean, you can. If you have trouble, like yeah. I can help you, like uh, like put that on the website. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll I'll stick it on the website. Uh, right, okay, uh, and yeah. So basically, the chapter summary. Uh, so in chapter three, we built a, a beta binomial models for an unknown proportion anywhere between zero and one, uh, and like every Bayesian analysis. Uh, the beta binomial models have four common elements. So it's got prior, it's got data, it's got likelihood, and it's got posterior. Um, yeah, <laughs> got to the end. Uh, so, yeah. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe before like we answer that, I think uh, we should uh, also add that uh, the beta binomial model is a kind of a particular model because we know like if we combine a binomial distribution with a beta prior it leads mm. also to a beta posterior distribution with different kind of parameters uh, this is like one stuff like I think was important to note because like you cannot do that with all the distribution and um, in the prior and in the um, in the model that, that so that will lead us later in the chapter to the Monte Carlo chain Markov chain and Monte Carlo because like we will need another way of uh, doing the calculus and integral parts yeah but we will see that later but I think this is important to note like some I think like this is an old family the author will probably introduce, I think it's a chapter like letters, like maybe in two chapters, they will introduce like uh, where you actually don't need uh, regarding your prior and your data model uh, to use, uh, you can use like shortcut that they call the conjug conjugate families. So it's just like a point to add if there's a like, I uh, want to add it. And so you can basically like do the math and do it by yourself instead of using like huge, uh, Huge stuff. Yeah. That's it. But still, the question you ask is relevant. Who want to present next week? Someone. <laughs> Let me check what's next week. Hmm. Balance and sequentiality in Bayesian analysis. Also, this will play with like prior, different prior, different posteriors, trying to find the good priors. So it will be more like uh, a workflow chapter, it looks like. And it's 20 pages with exercise. <laughs> no one? A volunteer? It cannot be only Will and me. Who will be here to help? I think I can probably do the week after next week if someone okay. else does next week. So does anyone want to try? I mean, it's it's fine. We're just sharing experience, like, and we can all, all like learn. I mean. And I mean, in terms of. That's it. Go on, Lisa. Were you volunteering then? There was a hand up, wasn't there? 
I, I, as I'm I volunteering now, so I can avoid nice. volunteering later. <laughs> but uh, no, no promises on, on, on anything super coherent. Um, oh, so okay. you will, you, well, don't, will you do don't, it? Don't worry about super coherence. I haven't. So, you know, it's fine. <laughs> no, I yeah, understood what you were saying earlier, so it was great. <laughs> Uh, and in terms of presentation, it's enough that you present something during the Zoom call, right? And then all this, like, you know, pushing to Git or publishing something online, all that stuff, we can <laughs> deal with that afterwards, I suppose, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, because, yeah. like, the pull requests have to be accepted by the owner of the um, GitHub repository, which is probably John, and John needs time to review it. So, yeah, it's fine as... as uh, like we'll have done, it's perfect. So no, no stress. Okay, and then is there like restrictions on the format or can the format be like maybe everything and then we'll just, you know, jointly. I mean, currently later. like the, 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 book, the website is the book down format, which is kind of a markdown like, I mean, sub produce. So even if you use like, Saringan or whatever, it will be like totally like copy past it into the for the book done format later. So I don't think it's as long as it's vaguely any... related to the book, that's good. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know. And we are here for sure. Like okay. So Lisa, okay, did so... you say yes or no? I, I misunderstood. Sorry. Yes, yes, I said yes. Um, I guess related to Eric's question. Sorry, I, I missed the first session of our cohort, but um, um, is like would PowerPoint be accepted if I don't? Yeah, get of to, course. Like, yeah. okay. <laughs> totally. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, sure. Okay. But af even after, if you want to spend a bit of time, like understanding how it works on GitHub and Bookdown, we can also like set up like a quick chat and do it. Okay, great, thank you. This is like, we are all here to learn. And, and I think it's really good. I think it's like, I, I'm loving what I'm hearing. I mean, it's just uh, like, if you compare to the baseline, the baseline is it's lying on the sofa eating potato chips and watching, um, uh, sorry. Uh, watching, a, watching a show. Sure, Frederica, go ahead. Oh, no, not anymore. Frederica. Okay, no, because I have a bad line, so I can't hear you properly, and I see you all stuck, but it's my problem. Uh, anyway, uh, you can watch the Advanced R, Court 6, for how to make the notes on YouTube, maybe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if, if you are too busy, like I think doing it PowerPoint will be perfect, like every step at a time. So I think we're good. So Lisa's doing next week. I will still read the chapter and prepare anyway. And uh, and Eric, you are doing like uh, conjugate families, the chapter five. Let's let let's aim for that and let's let's. Okay, we can we can we can decide on it, it definitely right? next week. But yeah, that it shouldn't be a okay. problem. I, I will I will try to send um, a, 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 a link to um, Akmardom. You will probably need to have a GitHub account to connect to it. Uh, if it's too complicated, we just copy paste in the, copy paste it in the Slack. So you tell me. With, I will just like uh, write on it the, my solution to the exercise, which can be wrong. <laughs> uh, I'm not 100% sure of them, but like it's just happens if you want to discuss, check or whatever. And it's it's. It's temporary, it will not be stocked. I mean, it will not like be available to, it will only be able to people who are using the link and that's it. So I will do that like maybe tonight, okay? Do you wanna share something with uh, other people or? Because it's also possible. <laughs> if not, I think we're good. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Will. I, I liked your presentation. It Cheers. was very interactive. It was good. Yeah. Uh, I'll put my name down for a few more because we've, we've got quite a few weeks to go, haven't we? I think it's like 19 yeah. or something. So, Good, good. So, yeah.
I, I mean, I, at, I can't... At, at some times we can also take holidays. Like we will see, like currently it's fine, but like yeah, at, we can discuss it together at some point. Hmm. If we can say like, we can, you can just set on the slide, like maybe we should discuss that and see. I, I can't promise Michelle Obama in every one though. Okay. <laughs> I'll try, but I can't promise. Maybe you will make them like, make her like, um, us to be the representative of the Democrats. We'll see. Well, no, she, she's, she's, far, she's far too clever to run for elected office, I think. <laughs> Maybe, yes. Which is a shame for America, but yeah, I think it's true though. Yeah. Okay. Question. Since, since, since we're done a little bit earlier than normal, uh, would it be of interest to jointly look at the exercises and discuss them together? Mm -hmm. Uh, now I, or, or is it a is it a bad timing? I haven't checked them. I can I can yeah. quickly check them. I'm still I'm still stuck like the exercise of chapter two. There are like twenty one exercise. I'm at ten. <laughs> so let's see this one. Let me check. Okay, I think the first one is soon not too hard. Like the basically asking you to play with the beta the beta distribution. So I guess for A, they say between 40 and 20. And mm -hmm. if we assume that it's symmetrical, uh, uh, probably, uh, yeah, then probably like, you know, the alpha and beta parameter. Would it make sense for them to have equal weights? Because uh, they say 40 to 60, so I guess it's, can we assume yeah. symmetry? And then so. yeah. if I got the beta distribution right, uh, like they say between 40 and 60, so if we're really like literate about the description, would that mean that there is like no or like almost no probability outside of those ranges? Would, does that make sense, or how do you think about it? I mean, see, if it's symmetric, it means that alpha equal beta, because like Ex um, exactly. But but then like, what uh, are the values, right? Because if the, alpha the, and beta are high, it's more narrow, and if alpha and yeah. beta are, are low, it's well. That's the way I understood it at least. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. Like uh, basically, like the beta distribution like is symmetric when both alpha and beta are the same. That's why it's it's kind of yeah. And then I think like, I don't remember, we should try. Oh, there is a good like online resource on distribution. I don't know if you could know distribution zoo. Uh, I, will, I will put a link because like the author like provide, provide us like a nice, uh, provide us some nice um, function to do it. But like you can, there is a shy, there is people who have made a shiny app with all the distribution and you can play with them directly. That means try if I seek, I found that distribution zoo. Oops. Yeah, it's this one. Okay, so, so for A, I, I mean, it. what I'm thinking yeah, is that if, if there's very little to no probability outside of 40 to 60 range, wouldn't that mean that alpha and beta need to be pretty big? So we get this sort of like, you know, high distribution I I, I, or? It's twenty. Oh, sorry. It's twenty percent of both side, so it's kind of not that narrow, but it's it's a prior distribution. You don't need like to. Oh wait, I didn't read the full sentence. When pressed further, they put the chance between twenty and sixty. Yeah. Ah, it's forty percent of getting the job. So that's okay. It's not between forty and sixty. It's so between let's twenty see, and sixty like... with a peak at forty. Yeah. So let's go with beta here. Uh... It's a continuous. Beta. And let's go with uh, something like five and five first. Uh, yeah, five and five looks good now. Maybe a bit less. You can go like in the distribution zoo, like uh, 
And then in the category distribution, you pick like the same continuous univariate. Then you have like the distribution uh, type you select beta and you can basically play with the two parameters, which is alpha and beta. And then you, you have the distribution. Do you see, do you all see that? It's good if you wanna play, this link is good. Like if you wanna play with distribution, it's, uh, and then you can export the code in R, which is, I find it pretty convenient. <laughs> I guess maybe worth mentioning is like the mean of the beta function is alpha over alpha plus beta. So we have yeah. to put that in <laughs> to how we think it looks like. Yeah. If it's the percentages, so it's. Uh, what, what, when I plot with 5.5, five, I mean, even doing like an 8.8, eight, to me, it looks like there's quite a bit of probability mass above. Uh, let's see, what was the, it's just between 20 and 60. And to me, it looks like quite a bit is above 60. Yeah, it should be like 0.4, you're right. Okay. Something like the mean should be And then the let's see, 40% of getting the job. Does that mean that it should be centered around 40? Yes, because the mod is the. Um, yeah. Lisa give us the formula, but I don't remember it. I have it. Uh, it's, 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 it's alpha divided by alpha plus beta, yes. So, so 40 should be like, uh, we have like 0. I mean, and we know like alpha and beta are the same because it's symmetric. So it's basically alpha divided by two alpha equal 0. 0.4. And something like that. I mean, yes, alpha divided by alpha uh, plus alpha because the because if it's symmetric, alpha equal beta. So this is something like that. So 0.4. I mean, I can't do the math here, but like this is uh, equal alpha divided by two alpha, I mean, alpha square. So yes, alpha is basically like one alpha, no? Am I right? I mean, it's not mean it's the experience, but. I feel like if you, if you make it symmetric, like alpha equals to beta, then the mean of the distribution is always 50%, no? Exactly. So, yeah. You would have thought so, wouldn't you? So I think, uh, yeah, I think the initial thing that I said that it has to be symmetrical is uh, badly wrong. If, if we wanted our mean to be 40%, yeah. If we didn't, then um, we, we, it could be symmetric, but it kind of depends on what we think 40% means too. <laughs> Exactly. But I mean, when pressed for it, they put the chance between 20 and 60%. So probably there's like very little to no probability space outside that range. And then the middle of that is 40, right? Okay. So probably 40 is maybe like the mode or something. Like not the mode, but like that, yeah, midpoints. Okay, just playing a bit with the distribution zoo. Uh, if you put shape at 3.3 .3 and uh, I mean the alpha, alpha parameter at 3.3 .3 and the shape and the second one at five, it start to be a bit like the, the standard deviation is a bit too big. Like it should be like, uh, because like uh, we have like 20% and here the standard deviation is 60. I mean, 16%, so it's probably like, we should probably adjust a bit, but I don't know how. You could try 6.9. Six, 6.9's nine. <laughs> six work? It's also mean 0.4, standard deviation 0.12. But I mean, yeah, it doesn't. They say there's no correct answer, no single correct answer. Yeah, you can probably have more than one. 
Yeah, this one is good. Kind of close, no? The sixth one. Okay. <laughs> so the, the other question is a new test for our disease. They expect that the test is accurate at 80% with a variance of uh, like all points uh, of, of 0.05, which will probably mean like we have like a, a very narrow uh, beta distribution, no? And and very uh, with very small uh, uh, beta parameters, if I understand correctly. Wouldn't big parameters mean low variance? Uh, small parameters mean big variance, or am I inverting that in my mind? It depends of which parameters. <laughs> if you go like, for example, 10 on the shape of alpha, and two on um, on beta, you get something that's close but still not good because you you want it to be uh, you need to follow like the um, I don't know the symmetry. Yeah, it's this one is pretty. I mean, symmetrical but like, like it's very. I never know like right. Uh, left skewed so if it's left skewed uh, the um, beta parameter should be low and the alpha parameter should be high if i remember correctly <laughs> i mean <laughs> playing a bit with our beta in r like if I do, for example, uh, the mean of an R beta that is 70, or yeah. I do the mean of an R beta that's 14.6, then the, the means are the same, but for the one with bigger values, uh, the standard deviation and hence also the variance goes down. And that's sort of what I thought I saw from looking at the examples of the graphs. Like if the alpha and beta are higher, like the, the midpoint of the distribution from look, just looking at examples seem to be similar. Um, uh, the, but the, 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 the data is less spread out. Uh, the, the, the variance of the beta distribution is alpha times beta divided by alpha plus beta squared multiply alpha plus beta plus one. So, so that's, in which, which section do we find those? Uh, I, I, know. I, I this really is on my notes. I don't know which section is. I will try to find it. Uh, if you if you just like uh, ask Wikipedia, you probably found it also more directly. Uh, it's on page fifty. No, sorry. Okay, so it's three point three, like equation three point three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's equation three point three. Okay, and since so, there's a square below like in the bottom like alpha yeah. plus beta squared times alpha plus beta plus one would it be fair to assume that for big values of alpha and beta i mean the if, denominator if it's symmetric, will go you can faster simplify it if it's symmetric denominator. you can also like alpha equal beta and, and it means alpha squared plus alpha squared plus two alpha plus one something like that <laughs> But yeah, I will be bad. Uh, I'm bad at doing uh, math like that without pen and paper. But yeah, it will be high level of alpha and small beta. But like, I don't know exactly how to set it up. Okay, guys, I will have to go. <laughs> I will try this exercise and display my answer in in the chat. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. If, if you want, if you want to continue, like feel feel free. But like, I have to, I have to put one kid to bed. It's already over for them. <laughs> no worries. 
I'm slightly on holiday next week, but I will probably, but not holiday, holiday, but I'm on leave, but yeah, I'll probably be here next week. But yeah. That's so, good. I, I didn't want to present next week as well, because I don't think, yeah, I'll have time because I'm doing quite a lot of other stuff next week. Okay. Well, I have to go. I'm leaving. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. It was, it was nice. Like, I like it. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.